The fast pace online assignment, aka the I can't believe it's not a take home exam. Here's what you need to know about the assessment task. It's worth 30%. It's going to be about 1,500 to 2,500 words, depending on how much you write. There will be three questions involved, and each question should take you about an hour and about 500 to 750 words. So it's one of those, a little bit of flexibility, a little bit of uh, variability. However, at 30% and a solo task to be delivered in week four, it's also one that comes with the expectation that be reasonable about the amount of time you sink into it and take into consideration that we're probably looking about 500 words for an answer, so that's about what your time commitment should be. We are opening the submission, so the Turnitin will activate after the Monday morning lecture. It will then be live for the duration of the week and it will close on the Friday. This is to enable us to mark the assignment in time to get it back to you. So we're calling it the fast pace online assignment because if I call it a take home exam, I am required to automatically fail people who don't submit on or before the due date. And I think that's a terrible idea, so I don't want to do a terrible idea. Instead, I've called it the Fast Pace Online Assessment, the Fast Pace Online Assignment. Functionally, it's a take home exam, but in reality, it's a very quick assignment. So, there are a whole bunch of other systems that are available to me so that you get the best outcome. What we are going to also do with this task is that we're going to use it as an opportunity to read your work for the very first time, to see how you structure your arguments and your essay question answers, what you do in terms of citation, reference support, the extent to which you engage with the existing materials that are around, the extent to which you draw down on sources beyond just the slides, the textbook, and what's on the Waddle site. This is a real chance for us to meet you as students. And what we'd like to do with that opportunity is give you some positive critique and some positive feedback. So this first task is designed to reward you with up to 30 points for submitting three questions worth of answers and providing us the chance to improve your performance towards the marketing audit and the final exam. Couple of things. It will cover chapters one to five. The content of one to five is fair game. And yes, week four is when we cover chapter five. If you have the textbook, and I recommend that you have the textbook, you can read ahead. Spoilers are not a thing that happen in the subject. You also note that the slides for week, five, for week four are up and available. Chapter five's summary is available. In fact, most of the course is available in advance. So if you are time pressured, you've got the opportunity to engage early. The two learning outcomes of importance to us. We need to know, as a result of your answer to this question, that you would be comfortable post subject in explaining and illustrating a need for marketing as and a marketing orientation as part of the business environment and also that you're familiar with some of the fundamental concepts of marketing and I'm going to say the marketing mix being very high on that fundamental. So this is just a first introduction. Hi, this is the marketing mix. We'd like to see how well those ideas have worked for you in the first instance. Now I'm going to ask three questions. Everyone's going to have the same three questions. The first question will be in a broad area of the definition and domain of marketing. 
The second question will be in the broad area of ethics and ethical considerations when engaging in marketing practices. And the third question will engage the role and the value of the marketing environment in what you know of marketing to this point. The three dot points that are on the screen right now are not the questions. The questions will be released to you in week four. These are three areas upon which I'm going to base my questions. So if you want to do some advanced preemptive study and gathering of materials or even just discussions with your mates in the tutorials or beyond the tutorials, those are the three areas that I'm going to be interested in getting essay answers from you about. Now for this round, everyone is contesting, all three. The reason I am emphasizing this is that in the final exam, it will be a question, there will be an additional area, there will be four questions in the final exam, there are three questions in the take home, I can't believe it's not a take home, hyperspeed, short paced, fast track essay that we're doing in week four. So three questions, answer all three. In terms of marking criteria, there are no perfect answers, so there are no criteria that is just piece by piece engagement with, oh, if you don't cover content X, tough. We roll from four out of 10 to 10 out of 10 as our grading criteria here in Intro to Marketing. So if you can test, if you do an answer and the answer is, it, it's not good, it's bad. It's worse than bad, it's a failure, it's a PX. There's four out of 10 for you. If you don't submit an answer, there's zero out of 10 for you. A pass answer is going to be very emotionally or opinionated driven without any substance behind it. Or you're just gonna throw some dot points or you're gonna not, you just don't finish the answer. First point where you get to score some decent return is a credit to grade, and that is going to require you to draw on external sources. Now the thing to understand about the way the grades criteria are laid out here is, as each criteria goes up one, the previous elements are expected to be present. So in credit, you're gonna to need to use external referencing sources. Therefore, that's gonna to need to be present at distinction, high distinction, super high distinction and ultra high distinction. So your baseline to get out of pass and into credits, answer the key points. Doesn't have to be a brilliant answer, but it does have to be an answer. You do need to draw on sources and references. Uh, the distinction, there's more clarity. There's greater argument, there's better engagement of the references you brought in and you're using supporting arguments and you're also cross-linking. In a credit answer, it's not a lot of cross-linking. It's a lot of point, point, point. Distinction, it's point in a weave. The two are connected. For a high distinction, you're improving the quality of the written work. It's seen multiple drafts. You've put together a really solid argument. You've drawn on examples as well as external sources, as well as your own insights. So we're starting to get to see a little bit of you as a marketer present in this answer. To step it up into super high and ultra high, in super high, there's a much greater level of clarity in the argument. So the separation point between high distinction and super high distinction is the strength of your reasoning, the strength of your rationale, the strength of your argument. The way you communicate and engage your elements of evidence. If you bring an example in, that the example is integrated into the whole of the answer, not just dropped in as a, oh yeah, there was Coca-Cola. They did a thing and then Coca-Cola's never referenced again. It's all about the integration, it's about the insight, 
And it's about us looking at your answer going, we've gained. We know a little more about you as a writer, but we also know a little more about the question we've asked. Same for Ultra High Distinction. The big difference here is it is about the precision. At Ultra High Distinction, there are virtually no mistakes. There are no detectable mistakes. We are looking at it going, that's really good. There is a certain level of subjectivity between the high distinction, super high, and ultra high. And that's based on the extent to which we look at the answer and go, yes, I, I, I've, I've gained something as a marker by reading this. I feel I've gained. So that's one of the things we're looking for in the UHD is just that extra little spark of insight shows us something new. So it owes us a little innovation, a little creativity, a bit of cleverness, something. There's a little spark. The je ne sais quoi element. Distinction, really solid on all technicals, but you can still make a couple of mistakes. Credit, you can make a few mistakes and get out. High distinction, less. Super high, even less. Ultra high, no. No mistakes. But you'll note that we're, again, we're interested in technique. Our driver here is to give you the opportunity to enhance how well you write answers so that you practice and train here and get some experience here that you can then embed the feedback and the development from this task into your next two items. So a couple of things in terms of advice. The questions that will be written. At the time of recording this video, I have not written the questions, so I could freely talk about this without giving spoilers. The questions will be written from scratch for this subject, this year, this semester. There are no prior questions for you to practice on because I haven't written the questions before. I'm writing the questions after. So there are no exemplars. The other reasons that we don't like exemplars, and I'm particularly opposed to exemplars, is I find that students may try and create perfect answers. That you'll get an exemplar and you'll study the exemplar and you'll dissect it and then you won't answer my question on the exam because you've invested so much energy and effort in this exemplar you play back the exemplar answer to a different question. And that sucks because that means I get a boring answer that doesn't connect to something that I've asked about and you don't get good grades. A lot of effort, no return. So for us, one of the things that's made the best return on, an e on effort for our students has been to move you away from the idea that there is a perfect answer or that there must be a trick or a trap or something other than the question that's on the page. And I ask my questions because I want to know what my cohort has in the way of answers. It's much more interesting to read papers when you are keen to hear what the story said is all about from a question that you've asked. So good answer. The top end, you know, the distinction credit starts from the platform of understanding the concepts, applying those concepts, using the language of marketing. This is a technical subject with a vocabulary, with technical terms, with supporting references. Use that. Use those assets, use those resources. Draw that together and address the question as it is on the page. Take your side, take your stance, answer with your argument, back it with your evidence, and things will go well for you. You are also, you are, you've got an online take home, fast paced, super speed, I can't believe it's not an exam assignment. So you've got access to the internet. You have access to the library. You have access to resources. Consequently, I'm going to expect you to use reference and citation. I believe very strongly in in-text citation and I believe cite it where you use it. So use ideas. I don't want to see people going around trying to drag and drop and copy and paste some chunk of text from somewhere else on the internet, from a journal article, and go, 
here, I found the magic answer, I've answered it. Because that's not how it works. In my house, in my subjects, under my questions, I want you to adapt the ideas that are out there. I want you to take and use other people's thinking and acknowledge your influences. Put in your little footnote, put in your bracketed author year, so I know that you've expended the effort and that you are also aware that you are leaning on the works of others to develop your own cohesive, coherent argument. If you are going to try and ask, oh yes, but that's all well and good, but how many references do you want? My answer is enough. Because as soon as I give a number, if I say a magic number, it becomes a magic number. People decide that, oh yes, well the lecturer said we needed N, and you may need more than that to make your case, but you've reached your magic marker line, and you go, okay, I don't need any more references now. That's not how referencing works, and all a magic number does is limits your thinking. Write an answer to the question using support and evidence, as much support as you need, because any time you're influenced by the works of others, cite them. Show that, hey, this idea, this sentence I've used here, draws down on the influence of another author. We respect that, because it's your interpretation of their work in the context of my question that shows that you've got a really good skill. And it's that skill we're looking for. Now, we are also going to target the feedback from this particular exercise to the end of semester exam. Some of you may already start to panic about the exam, but relax. Yes, we are asking for you to use references and citations and external search-based activity because this is an online event. When we stick you in a box, with no assets and resources, we will not expect you to use external search and external reference and external citation. We're reasonable people back here at the Assessment Factory. We want to use these assignments to train you, to give you an experience, and to reward you for effort applied accurately to the task at hand. So the second piece of advice, this is around dealing with the assessment task. Advice part two is read the question, then reread the question. Maybe walk away from the question for a while. Give yourself time to read it, walk away from it, think about it. Read it on the Monday, start work on it on the Tuesday maybe. Just engage it as you see fit. Obviously work to your own strengths. Anyone who believes that they work better under the stress of a fixed deadline, give yourself a fixed deadline and work to that strength of, I work best when I'm stressed and under pressure and delivering on a deadline. Well, make that three hour deadline window Tuesday night. Have your friend wipe your Xbox um, or sell your PlayStation if you don't get it done on a three hour window. Do something like that. If you've got to do the stress to motivate, put your stress early, get your motivation done, then you can come back and do second drafts. I would recommend setting yourself a window of opportunity to work on each of the questions and treat each question as a standalone task. Effectively, it's three 500 word tasks. So there isn't going to be any points allocated for carefully interweaving um, answer one into answer two into answer three. Give us three unique answers. Question one, question two, question three. I will also ask that I don't care what order you write them, please make our life easier for the marking team and, and when you submit that single final document to the turn it in, question one, question two, question three, page break between them. Make it clear, make it easy for us. 
We're going to try and mark these really quickly so we can give you your feedback as soon as we can so you can make use of it. So the easier it is for us to know when a question starts, when a question finishes, what the question's about, where the reference is, the easier it is for us to grant you grades. If you're the sort who gets frustrated by feeling that you're straight jacketed by us asking for you to put the questions in order, get straight jacketed. It's worth the extra. It's worth it to us to feel, ah, oh, question one, excellent, rubric, bang, bang, bang. Question two, rubric, bang, bang, bang. It makes our life easier. And for the purposes of this assessment task, we're the client, help the client get the value they seek. So the last recap on this is, this is your first task, your first major written task of the semester. It is 30%. It is designed to be a learning experience and an assessment experience. As a result of engaging the task, you're going to know more about yourself, you're going to know more about marketing, and you're going to receive guided feedback that you can use to improve performance on the other 60% of written tasks that are available in the semester. So, Go for it, enjoy it, have some fun with it, treat it with the respect of it is 30 points, but also it's 500 words and I'm thinking you need about an hour of written time to get yourself a good solid written essay. You may need some extra time, you'll need time beyond the hour to do the research, but if you set yourself some reading, look at the question, do some external reading, sit down, chuck a timer on, try and smash out a draft inside the hour, come back and do that a couple of times, it'll be in a good position. And ultimately what we want is we want you to succeed. The assessment's purpose is to help us guide you and to help us know that you've learned something about marketing by this early stage in semester and then we can tailor and structure and support you as we go through the rest of the semester. So if there are any questions about the task, feel free, chuck me an email, talk to your tutors, post up on your forums, engage, ask, seek feedback. We're here to help. We're on your side. We're your allies and your assets in this process. Work with us so you get the best outcome.